Hello and welcome everybody to today's tutorial about Relay Modern. Relay Modern is the 1.0 version of Facebook's homegrown GraphQL client called Relay. And today we're going to learn about it by writing a simple Instagram application. So this is what the final application is going to look like. We have a list of posts where we can delete existing posts or add new ones. So that's the functionality that we're going to build today. And if you just want to skip the tutorial and see what the final version of the code looks like, you can head over to our GitHub GraphQL examples organization. And in the React GraphQL repository, we have a lot of React and GraphQL examples. And if you want to check out the code for this particular tutorial, it's in the quick start with Relay Modern example. All right, so let's jump right in. We first have to go and create our project and we're doing that using a tool called Create React App. Create React App is, an, is, a, is a command line tool that gives you a React application with all the configuration that you need out of the box. So you don't have to configure any Babel or Webpack stuff anymore because that's already in there for you. Great, so here we've got my Create React App application that is called Instagram. So I'm going to CD into that directory. And what we're going to do here next is to create our GraphQL server. And the way how we do this is by using the GraphQL CLI. Um, and there you can use the GraphQL init command to create your own GraphQL backend. Here is what the command looks like. You're using GraphQL init and then you're passing the schema option. And in our case, this schema points to a remote URL where our schema is stored. And then we're also giving a name to the project that we're creating and that is called Instagram. So let's take a quick look at what that schema looks like that we used here. We can simply paste it in the, the, the remote URL in the address bar of the browser. And we have a very simple data model for our backend. We only have one type in our application and that is called post. And the post has a description and an image URL. So that's the schema that we are using for our project right here. The next thing we want to do is to prepare our Create React App application to use Relay. And we're doing that by adding a couple of dependencies. And the first dependency that we're going to add is React Relay itself. And that contains all the functionality for the Relay runtime and the Relay environment that we're going to use to fetch the data and manage the data in our application later on. The next dependency is the Relay compiler. And we're going to add the Relay compiler as a dev dependency. So we pass the dash dash dev option to the yarn add command, and this is going to install the Relay compiler as a dev option. And then the last dependency that we have to install is the Babel plugin Relay. And again, we are using the dev dev uh, the, the dash dash dev option to install it. All right, so with all these dependencies in place, we are now ready to start building our application and using Relay. But before we actually go and use Relay inside our application and inside our code, we have to do a little bit more configuration. Because, B um, because Relay uses the Babel plugin Relay to do an additional build step at, at static time where it looks at all your GraphQL code and is doing some optimizations. So we are going to have to configure that particular build step. But because we have used Create React App and Create React App has already done all the configurations for us and we can't really do any bubble configurations in the state that the application is right now, we first have to eject from Create React App. And we can do that by, uh, by invoking the eject script that is given to us by Create React App as well. And we can simply invoke it by calling yarn eject. So now we have the full access to the configuration of our application and can go ahead and configure the Babel build step. 
So I'm heading over to my IDE where I've got the package.json open of the project and here I can simply uh, change the bubble configuration in the package.json and add a new plugin where we are invoking the bubble plugin relay that we just installed. The next thing we have to do is to create a relay environment. And the relay environment is going to be the object that is going to be responsible for all the major relay functionality that we're going to use later on. And that's mainly related to networking and caching. So here I'm just creating a new JavaScript file in my sources directory. And here is where we are going to implement the environment that is going to be used by all the relay functionality later on. And the way how this works is that we need to instantiate the environment with two major components. The first one is a network and the network has to know the relay server that uh, we want to talk to. So here we are instantiating the network with a relay API endpoint. And here you have to go and replace this placeholder with your custom relay API endpoint that you got when you were creating the project. So if you ever lose your GraphQL endpoint, you can simply go ahead and type the GraphQL endpoints command in the terminal to get access to your endpoints again. And this only works if you're in the same directory where you've got the project.graphql, which is your configuration file for the whole GraphQL project that you're using. So here is the relay API endpoint. I'm simply copying it over and pasting it to replace the relay API endpoint. And now we have already instantiated the network for our relay environment. And the second component that we need to instantiate the environment is the store. And here we are simply creating a new store and that's, be, and that's going to be responsible for the caching in our application. All right, so now that we've got our relay environment set up, we can go ahead and create our React components for the application. And before, before we do so, we actually are going to import uh, the Tachyon CSS library because that's what we are going to use to ease up usage of CSS in our application so that we don't really have to worry about styling when we're implementing the app. So we just add this link to the uh, index.html file that you find in the public directory of the project. So now we can actually go ahead and create our first React components. And we're starting at the bottom of our component hierarchy with the component that we call post. And that's going to be responsible for rendering individual post items in our application. So let's take a quick look at the application again. So this is one post item and this is going to be rendered by the uh, post component that we're about to write. So here we've got the image, we've got the description and the delete button right here. And this is what we need to render in the post component. So let's take a look at how this actually takes place. We've got this div where we're going to render the image based on the image URL that is provided. Then we've got another div where we are going to render the description of the image. And then finally, we've got the delete button and on click of the delete button, we're going to invoke this hand delete method down here that we're going to implement later on when we're talking about mutations. Let's walk up our way the React component hierarchy and create the list page component next. So for that, I'm simply creating the list page file in the sources directory again and implement it like this. And it's basically a very simple container for the list of posts that we want to display. So here I've got this array of posts. For now, it's just mocked post data that we're going to replace the, with actual data that we are loading from the server soon. And we're mapping over it and each post will be represented by its own post component. So to use this, we actually have to go and change the implementation of the root component of our application as well. And that is the app component right now. So let's go ahead and replace the current implementation with this. We were simply returning the list page that we just implemented in the render function of this app component right here. Fantastic. So now we've got our component hierarchy in place to render the list of posts in our application. So let's go ahead and test if everything works by calling yarn start in a terminal. And this is going to open up the app in a browser uh, where we are now going, hopefully going to see the two posts that we defined in the mock post data array. And here they are. So now we can actually continue and fetch the actual data from the server. 
So I'm heading back to our application and here we now have to go and implement the data fetching logic to actually fetch the posts from the backend. And the way how this is going to happen is by declaring the data dependencies of each individual React component that we have by means of a GraphQL fragment. So the way how data fetching works in Relay is that each React component has to declare its own data requirements in the form of a GraphQL uh, fragment. And then uh, Relay composes all these GraphQL fragments on the root of the uh, component hierarchy to actually build the query that is going to be sent over to the server. So the way how we are going to do this is again by starting at the root of, um, at, at the bottom of our component hierarchy with the post component. And we first have to import two functions from the React Relay package. The first one is a higher order component called create fragment container that we're going to use to wrap our post component. And then secondly, the GraphQL function is what we're going to use to pass in or to parse the fragment that we're defining. So let's see how we can use these two functions to implement our data fetching logic in the post component right here. And in fact, we have to go and replace the export statement of the post component that we have right now with this. And here we are using the create fragment container function, the higher order component, to wrap our post component together with a GraphQL fragment where we define the data dependencies of this post component. And this data dependency is expressed in the means of a GraphQL fragment right here. And we're asking for the description and the image URL in the fragment because this is the data that we're using inside the post component. And then we're also using or asking for the ID of the post because we'll need it later when we're deleting a post. And one quick note about the name of the fragment that we're using right here. So there is a naming convention in Relay that says that a fragment needs to be, or the fragment name needs to be composed of the file name and the name of the prop that we expect to get injected into the component. So here we are in the file called post.js. So the first part of our fragment name is post with an uppercase. And then we've got the underscore and then we, um, need to use the name of the prop that we expect to be injected into our component. So this is the post prop that we expect to be injected right here. So this is why we call our fragment post underscore post. Like when we created the React components initially, let's walk up the component hierarchy and create the fragment containers one step at a time. So the next um, component in our hierarchy is the list page. And here in the list page, again, we need to import the create fragment container and the GraphQL functions. So let's go and use them by adjusting again the export statement of our list page component right here. So like before, we're using the create fragment container higher order component, and we're wrapping the list page component along with a GraphQL fragment. And that GraphQL fragment this time is a little bit more complicated, but first notice that we're using the same naming convention as before. So we are in the list page file and we want the prop that is going to be injected into our component to be called viewer. So that's why we're calling the fragment like this. And then we're using the all posts query basically to ask for all the posts that are currently in the database. In fact, we're only asking for the last 100 to not overload this one particular request. And in a more sophisticated application, you could actually go and implement a proper pagination approach here. And then we have to use this add connection directive that we're using from Relay. And that is used to be able to refer to that particular connection, the all post connection in the cache later on. So we don't need it right away, but we are going to use it when we're using mutations. And then we are actually reusing the post post fragment that we defined in the post component right here because the list page component is higher up in the React component and relay container hierarchy. So the higher, um, the, the higher a, uh, a container is in that hierarchy, it always needs to include all the fragments of its children so that this data is going to be fetched when it comes to the root of the container tree. We now can remove the mock data up here and replace the logic how we're mapping over the posts.
So in fact, we're not using this mock post data array anymore, but now we are accessing the posts that are going to be returned by the server. And we are doing that through accessing them through the viewer prop that we expect to be injected into the uh, component because we named our fragment like this. And then we simply follow the structure of our uh, GraphQL fragment. So we've got this all posts and we have to traverse it, uh, the, the, the connection over the edges, and then we can access each individual node, uh, each individual node that is going to contain the information about one particular post. And we render it again by using the post component. Amazing. So now our components actually declare all their data dependencies so they're ready to go and display the data that is being fetched by the server. But we still don't really know how the query that is actually going to be sent over to the server is going to be um, produced. And that's going to be uh, happening by means of a query renderer. And the query renderer sits on to, uh, on, at the root of the relay container tree. And in our case, that's again in the app component where we have to use it. So let's first go and import the required dependencies right here. So we are Im importing this query renderer, higher order component again, the GraphQL function. And then this time we're also importing the environment that we created before and that's responsible for the networking and caching part of relay. So the way how this is going to work is that the query renderer is going to become the root of our uh, application. So we're going to replace the list page right here with a query renderer. And the query renderer then needs to be provided with three different arguments. The first one is the root query and the root query looks like this. So basically that is the query that is going to be sent over to the server. And here we need to include all the fragments of the query renderer's children. So here it's enough to only include the fragment of the list page that we defined right here. So that's this list page viewer fragment, which again includes the post post uh, fragment from the post component. So effectively we included all the data requirements of the child components in this query by simply including this particular fragment right here. So that's the root query that we have to provide to the uh, query renderer. So let's move on and actually go and return the query renderer in our render function right here. So this is what the implementation of the query renderer looks like. We provide three properties when we instantiate the query renderer. The first one is the environment so that the query renderer knows where it has to send the query that it composes based on all the fragments of its children. Then we have the query, the root query that we just defined up here. And then finally, we also have to implement this render function where we either get an error back and we can render the uh, appropriate state to display the error message to the user. Or if we just get the props back, then we know that the query was successful. And we can actually go ahead and pass down the result of our, um, of the of the query of the request into the child component, which is the list page right here. And the list page is just going to extract the information that it declared in its own fragment from the viewer prop that is being passed to it down here. So let's move on and actually go and return the query renderer in our render function right here. So this is what the implementation of the query renderer looks like. 
we provide three properties when we instantiate the query renderer. The first one is the environment, so that the query renderer knows where it has to send the query that it composes based on all the fragments of its children. Then we have the query, the root query that we just defined up here. And then finally, we also have to implement this render function where we either get an error back and we can render the uh, appropriate state to display the error message to the user. Or if we just get the props back, then we know that the query was successful. And we can actually go ahead and pass down the result of our um, of the of the query of the request into the child component, which is the list page right here. And the list page is just going to extract the information that it declared in its own fragment from the viewer prop that is being passed to it down here. Very nice. So we're now actually done with all the data fetching logic inside our application. But if you're trying to run the app, you'll be disappointed because it doesn't quite work yet. So when we're trying to run the app with yarn start, then we're going to see an error that says that some files can't be found. So let's wait one second for the error message. And it says module not found, can't resolve um, this particular file right here. Well, and that's because we also have to use the relay compiler ahead of time before we are using uh, before we are actually starting the application and we haven't done that yet. So we actually have to invoke the relay compiler so that it can take a look at all the GraphQL code that we're writing inside our application and do its ahead of time optimizations. And one thing that the relay compiler needs in order to do these optimizations is actually access to our full schema file. And at the moment, the compiler doesn't have access to the schema file yet. In fact, we don't have the schema file in our project, so we can't really provide it to the relay compiler when we're invoking it. So the first thing that we actually have to do before we want to use the relay compiler is to get access to the GraphQL schema of our uh, GraphQL server. And the way how we do this is by using a tool called get GraphQL schema that you can install using NPM. And you have to pass the endpoint for your API as an argument, and then you can specify where you want to um, where you want this result to be written to. And here we're just writing it into a file that is called schema.graphql inside our application directory. All right, so now the schema got downloaded. We can actually verify that by checking. Uh, our directory. So right here we've got the schema.graphql file and this now contains all the information that the relay compiler needs in order to um, validate and optimize our GraphQL code. So let's invoke the relay compiler and we can simply type the relay compiler command and then we have to pass two options. The first one is the source option where we are telling the relay compiler where it can find our GraphQL code. And then the second option is the schema option. We were passing the path to the schema file that we just downloaded. So let's see what the relay compiler is now doing. It takes all the code that we've written for our GraphQL fragments and for the queries, and it generates these uh, JavaScript representations for us. It also um, it also generates the type definitions for flow, but we won't use that in this project. So we only care about these JavaScript representations of our GraphQL code. And in fact, if we go back to our project right now, we see that we also have this new directory right here in the, in the source folder where uh, we have access to all these different um, artifacts that were generated by the Relay compiler. So now we can go back and actually run the application because the file that was missing before for was now generated by the relay compiler. So now we can call yarn start again. This is to open up a browser, but naturally we're actually not going to see anything because we don't have any posts in the database yet. So uh, we just see an empty page. So uh, we don't have any errors, so that's good. But let's actually change that and render a couple of posts here so that we have something to see.
And the way how we're going to do this is by stopping the application again and then open up a gra uh, GraphQL playground that you can simply open up by typing the GraphQL playground command into the terminal. And this brings up a playground where you can paste in the following mutation after you changed to the relay API here. So it's really important that you switch from the simple API to the relay API for these mutations to work. So here I'm adding two mutations where we are going to recreate the same two pictures that we saw with the mocked data that we used before. So let's simply um, uh, run these mutations one at a time. So we first create the ice cream post, then the howdy post. And now if we are going back and restarting the application, then we should actually see these two posts being rendered on the screen. So here we now got the two posts that we just added in the playground. And if you're curious as to what the query looked like that actually got sent over to the, the GraphQL server, you can inspect this in the networking tab of your browser. So if you rerun, uh, if you refresh the page, you'll see again what requests are being sent over to the server. And here we are interested in that particular post request that represents our query. And here we can actually see the query that the query renderer built based on the information that we provided in the, po uh, in the GraphQL fragments. So um, on the top, we've got the app all posts query that we defined where we are only including the list page viewer fragment from the list page component. And here is then the um, exactly this fragment that again uses the post post fragment and the post post fragment is also included down here. So that's what the query that is gets that gets sent over to the GraphQL server actually looks like. Fantastic work so far. So now we are actually completely done with all the data fetching and rendering logic that we needed to implement. So let's now move on to the next part of this tutorial where we are talking about mutations when we want to create and delete posts. And the first thing that we have to do is we add a new component that we're calling create page to our application and we implement it as follows. So the state will represent the user's input. So the user can provide the description and the image URL. And then we've got two input fields right here where we are feeding the values exactly to the state that I just mentioned. And then if we have an image URL, we're also rendering this preview image right here. And then if the user actually provided a state and a description, we're going to render the post button and if the post button is clicked, we're going to implement the uh, or invoke the handle post method down here that we're going to implement in just a bit. Okay, so now we've got this implementation of the create page component, but at some point we also have to display that to our user. And for that, we actually want to use a routing library so that we can have two different routes in our application. One route where we are going to render the list of posts and then the second route where we are going to render this create page. And for that, we're going to use the routing library React Router. But let's take one second to talk about routing with Relay Modern in general, because this is a very unexplored field so far and the documentation is not a great help in finding your own routing strategy for your own application. So no routing is not going to be a feasible solution for most applications. So most applications will kind of require some kind of routing solution. The relay route approach is also not very compelling because relay, uh, the, the relay route component is actually part of Relay Classic. And as the documentation states, it's unlikely to be developed further. So if you're migrating from Relay Classic, then this might be a feasible approach for you, but it's not really something that you want to start out with when you're starting out with a new Relay Modern application. And then finally, this React Router approach which is basically what we're going to do right now, but it's 
uh, still not really developed how you can integrate relay uh, how you can integrate relay with react router in a way that really makes sense so we kind of have to wait for the community to develop best practices and new standards around routing with relay for now we're just going to use a very very simple approach and in integrating react router so the first thing we have to do is to pull in the react router dependency into our project so Again, we're using yarn add and then React Router. And in fact, for this particular pr project, we're going to use React Router 2. And there is really no other reason for us um, to do so than that we want to stay consistent with all the other GraphQL examples that you find in our GraphQL examples GitHub organization. So that's the only reason why we're using version 2 of React Router, but you might as well go and adjust the um, the code that we're using uh, to update it to React Router 4. All right, so the dependency is installed. Let's go ahead and use it in our application. And the location where we're going to do this is in the index.js file, which is kind of the root for our whole application. And again, we're replacing the whole content of the file with the code that we're using now and here we're using the react router to define two specific routes and these are the routes that i just mentioned the first one is the root route where we're going to render the app component which as we recall is the root component of our whole application and renders the list page including all the posts that are fetched from the server and then we introduce this new route right here at slash create and here we are going to render the create page component that we just wrote we also need a way to navigate to that new route that we just introduced and that we're going to do in the list page component where we're adding a link that is going to um, navigate to this new route um, to the new route that we just introduced when the user clicks on this new post button and for that to work we also have to import the link component from the react router package so let's save the app and see if uh, that actually works let's call yarn start and open up the application again and now we should see the new post button being rendered in the top right of our screen. And when we click it, we expect the application to navigate over to the slash create route. So I'm clicking it. And here we are now seeing the create page component being rendered. Perfect. Let's move on now to actually implement the mutation that we're going to trigger when the user is providing information in the create page component. So the first thing again that we have to do is we have to create a new file in our um, sources directory and we're calling that the create post mutation. And we paste the following code inside it. Let's walk through it step by step. So we first have to import a couple of dependencies. We're importing the commit mutation function from React Relay and again the GraphQL function to parse the GraphQL code we're about to write. Then we also import this connection handler from the Relay runtime that we're going to need to update our uh, store, uh, to update the cache. And then finally, we also need access to the environment again because we're sending a mutation and the environment is the component in, inside our whole relay setup that knows how to talk to a GraphQL server. So we also import that one. We then move on and actually implement the mutation. So this is again raw GraphQL code that you could paste as such into a GraphQL playground to create new posts. And it takes as an argument an input object that contains the description and the image URL of the post that we want to create. Then we specify the payload of our mutation right here. So this is the data that is going to be returned by the GraphQL server after it created the new post. And then finally, we're uh, defining a function that we're also exporting and this is going to be the mutation that can be used by other components when they actually want to um, commit a mutation. So we're passing in the description and the image URL so we're going to use that inside the create page component where this is, uh, information is provided in the state of the component. 
Then we're also passing in the viewer ID and a callback that's going to be passed in when um, the uh, mutation has been performed. And the viewer ID, again, we also need to get access or to, to update the store after the mutation was performed. So that's the function that we're exporting and all the argument that all the arguments that this function takes. So let's take a look at what's happening inside the function. So we are first constructing this input object that we need to pass into the mutation and we're using the description and the image URL for that. Notice that we also have to pass this client mutation ID here and that's only because of a minor limitation in the GraphQL API at the moment where this field is required, otherwise the mutation would get rejected. And then we're calling the commit mutation function that we imported above and we're passing in the environment. And then we also pass in an object where we pass in the mutation um, that we defined right here. So this is the GraphQL code that is um, being passed into the commit mutation function. Then we're also passing the variables and that's the input object right here. So now we provided all the information that the GraphQL server needs to actually perform the mutation. So let's take a look at these remaining functions that we need to implement. And in fact, this optimistic updater and updater functions, these are part of the new Relay Mutations API where you now can go and update the store um, in an imperative way by um, accessing this proxy store object right here and modifying its contents so that you don't have to, um, or you, you can really manually decide how you want the cache to update after a mutation was performed. So let's take a look at how we implement this. So first the optimistic updater. And here what we're doing is we're creating a temporary post object. So this post object that we're creating right here will be the content of the cache until the actual post object from the server arrives. So we're putting a post object that is not actually stored on the server yet. We're putting that into our cache so that the UI can already update even though the server response hasn't been returned yet and the server hasn't actually confirmed that the mutation was successful. So then we are taking this new post object and we're adding it to the list page all posts connections. And here is where we refer to the key that we specified in the um, connection directive in the GraphQL fragment in the list page component. So this is the same key that um, we are using in the mutation. So we're referring to that connection and we want to insert a new node into that connection. And th the, the node that we're inserting, in fact, is this temporary post object. So this is how the, the relay cache basically gets updated in a, in a very manual and direct way when we're using the new um, mutation API. And then for the updater, the second part is actually exactly the same. So this and this is completely identical. And the part before how we obtain this new post object is different because before for the optimistic updater, we constructed a temporary post object ourselves, but this time we're actually accessing the data that has been returned by the server. So we are um, taking the root field from our mutation, which is the create post field. It actually refers precisely to this root field of our mutation right here. And then we're getting the linked record with the key post. And that also just follows the structure of the payload that we specified in our mutation. And now we have this new post object that we actually can insert into the store. And we're doing that again with the same code that we use for the optimistic updater as well. And then finally, once all of that was done, we call the callback that was also passed in um, into, into the function in the first place. So that's the callback that the caller can pass in right here. 
All right, so the last thing we actually need to do right here in the create post mutation is to also add a global variable that is called temp ID. And that's being used in the optimistic updater to just generate a new ID for the new posts that are being put into the cache temporarily. Okay, so now we want to use this function that we're exporting here in the create page component. The only problem is that this function expects the viewer ID to be passed into it, but the create page at the moment, it doesn't have access to this viewer ID. So this is actually a situation that we could potentially resolve by simply um, passing the viewer ID from the list page component where we could add this as a new requirement in the fragment right here and then pass it along um, when we are um, navigating to the create route. But this is not really how um, we should structure our application and we want to make sure that the create page who has the viewer ID as a data dependency to actually work. We want to make sure that it gets access to this viewer ID independently from other components. So again, we'll have to use relay to fetch the viewer ID and we're going to do that with the following code. So we have to replace the return or the, the render function of the create page component that we have at the moment. And this looks like a lot of code, but notice that all of this is simply the previous implementation that we already used. So I'm just going to collapse it. And essentially what's going to happen is we're simply wrapping our create page component again with a query renderer so that we're able to ask for data from the server in the create page component individually. So here we've got the um, environment again, and we have this root query that we have to provide to the query renderer as well. So let's go ahead and write the root query next. It simply looks like this. So the create page doesn't have a lot of data dependencies. It's in fact, it's only the ID of the viewer. So that's the only, um, the only thing that we need to include in the payload of our query right here. So now we can go and implement the handle post method. So the handle post method actually is going to be invoked when the user presses the post button down here. And we now che slightly changed the way how we call this function or this method by also passing in the viewer ID that we now expect to be available in the props of our component when we render it through the query renderer. So now we can replace the current implementation, the empty implementation of the handle post method with the viewer ID that is being passed in. And then very simply, we're retrieving the description and the image URL from the current state of the component. And then we're passing all of this information into the create post mutation function that we exported right here. And for this all to work, we actually have to also import a couple of dependencies on top of the file. So a couple of things that we used were the create post mutation. That's the function that we defined in the create post mutation file. Again, the query renderer and the GraphQL uh, function and the environment again. And finally, we also have to adjust the export statement because the callback that we are using and that we want to be executed once our mutation completes uses the router to navigate back to the root route of our component. So we have to make sure that this router prop is available inside the create page component. And we can achieve that by wrapping it with the with router function down here. Phew, okay, you're now done with the implementation of the create post mutation and we can try it out inside our application. So let's move back to the terminal and we first have to invoke the relay compiler again. So I'm stopping the current execution of the app, invoking the relay compiler with again passing the source directory and the schema file as arguments. And now we can run the application again and then we should be able to add new posts through the create page component
and with the um, create post mutation that we just implemented. So let's wait a second until the page loads and try to add a new post right here. All right, we also see that the UI updates immediately, so all of our setup seems to work, and we now are able to add new posts to our list. Amazing work, so let's move on and implement the last bit of functionality that we still need in our application, and that is to delete existing posts. So let's go ahead and create a new file that is called delete post mutation, and implement it with the following code. So that's very, very similar to what we did in the create post mutation. So I'm going over it a little bit faster. First, we import the required dependencies into the file. Then again, we're defining the mutation that we want to send over to the server. And then we're exporting a function where we're taking in the arguments that are required for this mutation to work. We're constructing the input object. And then finally, we are calling commit mutation with the environment, the mutation, and the variables that we defined above. Before we implement the optimistic updater and updater functions, let's quickly uh, implement the handle delete method in the uh, list page, uh, in, the, in, the, in the post component first. So here we've got the post component where we are going to call the handle delete method when the on delete button is pressed. So we are passing in the post ID, but not yet the viewer ID. So we are going to talk about that in a second. First, let's see what happens if we implement it without the viewer ID and without the updater and optimistic updater functions. So here I just added the dependency of the delete post mutation into the post component. And I want to run the relay compiler again and then start our application. <clears throat> so if we do this, the mutation is actually already going to work and we will be able to delete posts, but the UI is not going to update because we're not implementing the updater or optimistic updater functions. So if I click the delete button here, this post is actually deleted now, but we still see it in the UI because the UI doesn't get updated. If I refresh the page, then it's actually gone. So what we have to do in order for the UI to update immediately, we have to go and implement the up, uh, updater and optimistic updater functions. So let's do that right away. We head back to our uh, implementation and to the delete post mutation, where we now replace the implementation of the optimistic updater and updater functions with the following. So first, let's talk about the optimistic updater. So the optimistic updater actually works in a similar way as the with the create post mutation, but this time the setup is a little bit simpler because we don't have to create a temporary object uh, that, that we're going to put into the store, but except we are just removing the object optimistically from the store using the delete note method on the connection handler right here. And notice that again, we're using this list page all posts key to refer to our connection with all the posts. And the updater function again works also in a very similar way. So the second part of it actually is also again identical to the optimistic updater. And in the first part, like before, we're accessing the information from the mutations payload. So first we're getting the root field that is called delete post. And then from the this root field, we're just getting the value deleted ID right here. And that's what allows us to remove this particular post from the cache, from the relay cache right here. Okay, so we updated our delete post mutation properly. So now the delete post mutation will actually update the UI after it was performed. But it's still not going to work because in the uh, post component where we are calling the mutation, we're not yet passing in the viewer ID that is required to get access to the all posts connection. So what we actually have to do is we have to include a second fragment in the data dependencies where we are now also asking for the viewer's ID so that we can pass it in into the handle delete method, uh, into the delete post mutation right here. 
So here we're expecting the prop that is injected to be called viewer because that's the second part of our fragment name. And then we're simply passing in the ID. But for this code to work, we have to make two more minor adjustments. And the first one is to actually include this post viewer fragment in the um, data requirements of the relay container that is the next up in the container hierarchy. And that's the list page component again. And here we can simply um, paste it in as an additional fragment into the data dependencies of the list page component. And then we only have to adjust the post, um, the post component that we are rendering in the render method of the list page. And we also pass down the viewer that we expect to be passed in from the top into this component as well. So this is all we have to do for the delete mutation to work properly. So let's go ahead and test it right away in our application. We first have to invoke the relay compiler again. So let's simply call the relay compiler. The, the um, GraphQL code that we just wrote now has been compiled and we can run the application again. And now we should be able to delete posts in the app without having to wait for the UI to update, but instead it's going to update immediately. So let's delete this post here and we see that it's possible to delete the post and the app updates immediately. So that's it for this Relay Modern tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed learning about Relay Modern and if you've got any questions then check out our documentation or join our forum, our Slack community and subscribe to GraphQL Weekly which is our weekly newsletter around everything that's happening in the GraphQL community. Hope to see you soon.